This video is a little different, and I'll explain that in a moment, but let's first answer the question in the thumbnail. Is this purple table worth $1,200? One seller has these tables listed for $625 a piece. Another seller, $1,200 a piece. Does that make my purple lane table worth $1,200? The short answer is absolutely not. But can I do something to make this a little better? I think so. As with most of the lane furniture from this era, the manufacturing date is stamped on the bottom of this piece, so I'll ask what I've asked in other videos, and that is, where were you in 1957? Let me know in the comments. And if you're like me and you weren't around yet, then let me know what furniture piece you may have in your house that's possibly older than you and has significant sentimental value. I never want my videos to be the same, and so in this video I decided to try something different. I'll show the full restoration, but I'll also include several clips of day-to-day -day activities since it is spring here in Wisconsin. So I hope you'll see a clip that you can possibly relate to. I'll start by sharing what I've learned recently regarding some of the history behind the Lane Furniture Company. In March 1912, a man named John Lane purchased a box plant in Alta Vista, Virginia. His son, Ed Lane, was 21 at the time and was encouraged by his father to try his hand at starting a chess factory in the newly acquired plant. They incorporated the little company as the standard red cedar chess company. And from cedar chess, Lane expanded to occasional tables in 1951, case goods in 1956, and accent tables in 1965. The most popular style of furniture from Lane Furniture Company was the Lane Acclaim series, introduced in 1959. Designed by Andre Buss, this iconic dovetail design incorporated ash or fruit wood with walnut inlay, and this design is easily recognizable and still popular to this day. Although I don't do it much anymore, if you're looking to flip furniture for a profit, I've included several photos of vintage Lane furniture pieces that I've owned over the years. I won't include most of the Lane Acclaim pieces because I'll be doing a Lane Acclaim restoration series on the channel very soon. The few pieces that I haven't found yet would include the Lane Boomerang coffee table and the Lane Switchblade coffee table. I purchased this Lane side table on Facebook Marketplace recently for $25, and although this style is not a preference of mine, it's still a very popular style. It's part of the Copenhagen series, and we know the date of manufacturing was 1957, and this was just a few years before the Lane Acclaim series was introduced in 1959. The serial number backwards is the manufacturing date, this reads September 17th, 1957. For several reasons, this table has lost significant value. However, it is still fun to find comps online. This set for $2,400 and the second set for $1,250. This probably goes without saying, but we know this information does not mean that's what these tables are worth. Topping the music charts in the USA in September of 1957 was Tammy by Debbie Reynolds. And both in the UK and the US, was Paul Anka, Diana. As I researched this Copenhagen table, I realized that the originals had brass feet and I wasn't sure I would ever find those. So my goal for this table will just be to remove the paint. Working on a small project like this allows me to continue practicing with refinishing vintage furniture. It also allows me the time to consider what was going on in the world at the time this table was made. Although the purple paint would not have been my first choice for a vintage furniture piece like this, it isn't my place to say whether painting furniture is right or wrong. If you are in fact the rightful owner of any furniture piece, it's up to you what you decide to do with it. I'll start by removing the felt pads on the feet. These are typically attached with a tack sometimes with adhesive, so I'm using the heat gun to loosen the adhesive, and these should come right off. I do earn revenue from my YouTube videos, 
but when it comes to refinishing or restoring furniture pieces like this that takes hours or even days, sometimes I may not even yield a profit from the resale. But for me, sometimes it's not even the goal of taking on a challenge like this. For me, there is so much satisfaction in just seeing the transformation of a piece like this. The joy that it brings when you're able to step back and see the final product is hard to find these days. Most of these furniture pieces will never be what they once were, and that's okay. There's value in respecting the vision of the designer, but oftentimes these pieces were mass produced. I think it's more important to understand the improvement of the quality of life as you're working on a project like this. So if that means you choose to paint something, who am I to say that you're wrong? There's also value in learning lessons along the way with each new project and improving your skills as you work. Those are lessons that can be carried over into every area of your life. And for that reason, some of these projects, you can't put a price on them. So don't be afraid to take on a challenge like this and don't worry about what others think with the final result and take every opportunity to share those experiences with others in the best way that you know how. Why do I share these thoughts while I'm working? Well, I hear from people all over the world through my Instagram, my Facebook, and my YouTube channel, and even the next door neighbors whose kids are interested in refinishing furniture. So I feel like we're all on this journey together and hopefully some of these thoughts will resonate with you while you're working. I'll start by scraping some of the paint off with this detailed stainless scraper. I'll also use the carbide scraper and all these products I'm using in this video will be listed in the description below. While scraping the paint off the legs, I know I can afford to be a little more aggressive since these are solid ash or elm. I'll scrape most of the paint, but it's not necessary to remove all of the paint since I will be coming back with paint stripper. To cut down on costs, furniture companies would often build most furniture pieces with cheaper wood like ash, elm, or even fruit wood. Sometimes veneer was added as another way to cut costs. Most of the pieces from this era had walnut veneer. The factory would then spray these pieces with a tinted lacquer. This was an attempt to blend all of the different wood species and give the entire piece a more uniform look. I often hear from many viewers who, for a number of reasons, are unable to do work like this, but I wanted to take a moment to say thank you because for many of you, your gift is your words, and so your comments are an encouragement to me as I'm working, and I receive postcards from many of you, letters, other items in the mail. Some of you support me through the Amazon wish list or even through the Buy Me A Coffee app. I'm also excited to share recent eligibility regarding a new way to support the channel directly through the YouTube video. More importantly, I hope that some of you will benefit from something in this video. This is the fourth year that I've had an American Robin nesting on my front porch light. And although the life expectancy of a Robin is approximately two years, I'm convinced this is the same Robin nesting in the same area every single spring. Regardless, this is just a warm, dry place to lay her eggs and raise her hatchlings. I'll move on to removing the rest of the paint with Quick Strip Premium Stripper. And you'll notice I haven't removed all the paint from the legs. This is intentional with most of my projects now. I just remove enough of the paint to cut down on some of the waste with the premium stripper. Also, the stripper works better in the detailed areas as you'll see. Since the top of this table is likely a very thin walnut veneer, I'll first apply the paint stripper. Then, if necessary, come back with the carbide scraper and use it gently. If you're wondering, I do test these paints for lead. I do have a simple lead test kit and I'll be showing that process in the next video. I'll let this sit for about 15 to 20 minutes. I'll come back with a plastic spatula and scrape off the paint. I often get asked what I do with the leftover paint. I dispose of it in these old paint cans 
and eventually it will go to the local waste site. The entire time I was working on this project, I was excited to try something new, and that was to apply a clear coat to the entire table, giving this piece a more natural look. However, no matter what I tried, I had difficulty getting all of the primer out of the wood grain or the wood fibers. And so rather than risk sanding through the veneer, I decided to get out as much primer as I could and then apply a walnut stain. I'll move on to sanding this table with mostly 150 grit sandpaper. I'll use the orbital sander in some areas, but for most of this table, I'll sand it by hand. I'll then finish with 220 grit sandpaper in preparation for the gel stain. I often get so caught up with creating content that I forget to mention what I plan to do with finished furniture pieces like this. I do sometimes sell these furniture pieces for a profit. I do try to make videos to show how to flip furniture for a profit, but in this case, the seller was such a pleasure to speak to, and she knew what I had intended to do with this furniture piece, so given the opportunity, I would like to give this table back to her. I recently gave a vintage chair away to a young couple, and I don't believe it's a coincidence that the next day a viewer reached out to me offering me a set of vintage lane acclaimed tables at a heavily discounted price. So 
I'm grateful for all the opportunities and I don't ever expect anything in return. It's such a pleasure to give things to other people and share some of the joy that comes with projects like this. I want to take a moment to say thank you to Joe and Katie, a few local viewers, a married couple who gave me these vintage tools. I've used many of them already for this first project. Joe also gave me a birdhouse that he built and within 24 hours of putting it up, it was already occupied. While I'm polishing the four screws for this table, I want to say a quick thank you to so many of you who recently purchased the Mad City Modern Apparel from my Etsy shop. I never imagined when I created this design that viewers would show support for the channel in this way, so I appreciate all of your support. The link for this apparel is in the description for this video. Otherwise, the name of the Etsy shop is Mad City Collectibles. For the reasons I mentioned earlier, I chose to use Minwax Gel Stain in Walnut. I'll apply this with a foam brush, wipe it off with a simple shop rag. Before I do this, I'll wipe this piece off with a tack cloth and also use the air compressor to blow off any dust particles. Here's a clear example of one of the areas where the primer was still embedded in the wood fibers. So the gel stain, I believe, was the best choice for this finish. Before I apply a top coat, I'll spray on a toner, extra dark walnut. This will help blend the legs with the walnut veneer. For the top coat, I'll apply one of my favorites, General Finishes Armor Seal. This is a pre-thinned oil-based wipe-on polyurethane in satin. I'll apply several coats of this, leaving several hours in between to dry. The drying time will be dependent upon the temperatures in your area. As always, if you've enjoyed this content and you feel that I've earned your subscription, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Hitting the thumbs up will help get this video out to a wider audience and hit that notification button so you don't miss the next video. The obvious dust particles before I apply this wax are just a part of life and working in a shop like this. I'll apply for the last step, Howard Feed and Wax Wood Polish and Conditioner. Wipe this on, 15 minutes later I'll come back, wipe this off. 
This will add a nice sheen to the piece. If you're worried about it being too glossy, you can always continue to wipe it back to your liking. As always, thanks for your support. Goodbye for now.